Hey everybody, Mark Walters here with BigFanboy.com. Just going to do a quick review for A Quiet Place Part 2. By the time you watch this video, A Quiet Place Part 2 should be playing in theaters everywhere. And if you're a fan of the first movie, A Quiet Place, which I certainly was, I highly recommend you check this one out. Also, if you've never seen A Quiet Place, the first one, I highly recommend you watch it before you watch this movie or else you're going to be very confused and not know why all the things that are going on are going on. So please, don't be that person that goes to see a sequel without seeing the first one, especially in this case. This time around, John Krasinski is once again directing, although he's also handling screenwriting chores. Uh, and he does appear in the film in a form of a flashback sequence that kind of opens the beginning of the movie. If you remember in the first movie, we got to see just a little, little snippets of what day one was like for the people when the creatures arrived and you know what everything when all hell was breaking loose and what that looked like you know what some of that was mainly through the eyes of Emily Blunt's character in this movie we get to see more of that this time through you know the eyes of both Krasinski and uh, the kids and I appreciated that I appreciated the fact that he not only shows us more and he kind of incorporates some of the stuff that we already saw in the first movie, like incorporates the footage so that it all kind of blends together seamlessly. We feel like we're seeing more of a scene that we already saw just expanded out, you know, so that we get more information. But I also love the fact that he keeps it ambiguous. Like he shows us a little bit more to do with the creatures so we get a better idea of maybe like where they came from or, you know, we don't, we still don't know why they're here. But I love that ambiguity. I love the fact that we see more, we get more information, but we still don't know everything there is to know, which is very smart if you're thinking about doing yet another sequel. I see what you're doing, Krasinski, and I like it. Uh, once again, Emily Blunt is terrific in this movie. She's always good in everything she does. But what I really liked was this film focuses much more on the kids this time around. Millicent Simmons, who was terrific in the first film, gets a lot more to do in this movie. In fact, in some ways, she's almost kind of taking the lead in this film. And Noah Jupe has a lot more to do as well, and he's also wonderful in this film. I was a fan of his even before A Quiet Place came out. I think that he's absolutely phenomenal in this movie. It's almost as if Krasinski saw their performances after that first film came out and realized I gotta give these kids more to do, and he certainly does in this film. Killian Murphy also joins the cast as a sort of friend of the family. We get to see a little bit of him in the flashback at the beginning, so we understand that he knows them, but we don't really know a whole lot about him. There seemed to be a little bit of confusion about that too. When I was coming out of the screening, some of the other critics that I was with, they, uh, they were even saying they thought, was that supposed to be his brother? But there's a line of dialogue in the film where Krasinski's character even asks him, he's like, hey, did you talk to your brother? Is there something going on at the base? So obviously they're not related. But I think they maybe could have explained more about who that character was or who he was to them. All we really know is that he's just another local town folk that has kids um, and uh, kind of goes through a little bit of uh, his own tragedy by the time they find him in the film. But we don't really get a full sense of like his origins and whatnot. And maybe that's for the best. You know, sometimes, again, having that ambiguity, having you kind of put the pieces together for yourself, it's not always a bad thing in a film like this. There's some masterfully directed scenes. There's a couple of scenes that really stick out in my mind. Uh, one scene that takes place on a dock, and that's all I'll say. I don't want to spoil anything about the scene because it's just a great, well put together scene the way that he kind of ramps up the tension in that scene and the way that he uh, resolves that scene, very, very smart. I actually found myself clapping and kind of cheering in the movie, which is not something I normally do in a press screening. Usually the press screening is a, you know, a little more, everybody's kind of quiet and reserved, but I was just having such a good time watching the film that I, I found myself really getting into it. And I have a feeling that scene in particular is gonna be a big hit with audiences. Um, more of the same stuff with the creatures, them finding creative ways to stay away from the creatures. You know, if you like that stuff in the first movie, there's plenty more of that in this one. So you'll definitely, you know, be entertained that way. Uh, there's also Jaiman Hansu, the great Jaiman Hansu, shows up in sort of the final act of the movie. 
in a very unique sort of setting. Uh, I found myself as I was watching it thinking, you know, they could make a movie just about the setting that he's in and the people in that setting. And it would be very interesting to just see that movie. That's how sort of rich and layered this tapestry that Krasinski is weaving for this franchise to where I really believe if he does want to come back and make a third movie, it would be very easy to kind of expand and do more stories. You could even have spinoff stories. You could have a movie called Another Quiet Place or something and have it be about a completely different family that was trying to survive. So I appreciated the fact that there were more layers to this movie than what we saw in the first film. It, it really does expand the narrative a bit more, and I, I very much like that aspect of it. They also really push the boundaries of the PG-13 rating here. I mean, this is a dark and at times really violent film, uh, which, listen, I'm not complaining. I, I'm, I, I'm totally cool with horror movies, gore, and stuff like that. I have no problem with it. I was just surprised at some of the stuff they were able to get away with. But it's very creatively done. And so, you know, I, I think that's one of the reasons why they probably got away with it the way that they did. If I had to say there was any complaint, if there was anything that bothered me about the film, there's only two things that come to mind. And they're minor gripes. And that is that in this film, the family is definitely split apart. Uh, Millicent Simmons' character ends up kind of going off on her own adventure, which is very interesting and very well handled in the film. But it separates her from Noah Jupe's character, from Emily Blunt's character. And there are other moments in the film where like, the characters are kind of splitting up. And I just remember thinking, like, isn't this family stronger together like wouldn't it be more interesting to see them stronger together but because of how well everything is handled and because of how exciting everything is regardless of which character we're watching and the fact that Krasinski does a great job of cutting back and forth to the different moments like we may see Millicent Simmons character doing something and he'll show a little bit of that and then he'll cut to Emily Blunt's character and then he'll cut to Noah Jupe's character and it's very masterfully edited in the way that he does it to where, you know, it keeps the audience very engaged in what's happening in the film. But, you know, he doesn't linger too long on any one moment. And, and I thought, again, that was just very smartly done. So I didn't like the fact the family got split up, but it still works. So I guess you could call that a very minor gripe. My only other gripe, and it was one that I'm sure a lot of people are going to have when they see this film. It's probably going to be the number one complaint that you hear. And it's something that actually existed in the first movie. And that is the ending of the film is very abrupt. Uh, if you remember the first movie, the way that it ends, the, the big event that happens at the end of the first movie, like it happens and then they just cut to credits like that. Well, this movie, it's even more jarring and more abrupt in the way that it ends. And part of the reason for that is because there's multiple plot threads that because it ends the way it does, these plot threads are not resolved. Like there's people in a certain place and it's like you don't see how they get out of there or how they get back to where they need to be because it ends so abruptly. Uh, and that was a little bit jarring, but it also kind of mimics what we saw at the end of the first movie. So I get it, but I kind of have a feeling, I think I'm less bothered by it. I'm more bothered by the fact that I know other people are going to be bothered by it. And I would hate to think that something like that would somehow affect someone's perception of how they felt about this movie. Overall, I feel A Quiet Place Part 2 is an exceptional sequel. It's one of those rare, exceptional sequels that very much kind of builds upon what the first movie did and expands upon it. It works as a great companion piece for the first film. Definitely shows Krasinski's strengths as a director, and all of the actors involved give wonderful performances. I cannot wait to see where they go from here, and I certainly hope we get to see more that takes place in this universe. A Quiet Place Part 2 is a terrific sequel. I highly recommend you see it, especially if you enjoyed the first film. If you want to see more of my reviews, check out BigFanboy.com. We are the longest running movie news website in Dallas, and we're celebrating our 16th anniversary. And we want to thank all of our readers and all of our viewers who have joined us here. And if you like this content, please subscribe down below. We'll have more for you later. I'm Mark Walters. We'll see you guys in theaters soon.